Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the a and class. Uh, this is the week of June 1st. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. I hope everybody had a chance to enjoy some of the weather uh, safely, of course. So uh, a couple things to open up to some updates for everybody. And um, everything is still very tentative right now, but uh, I did get word that apparently Walker County applied to enter phase two of reopening uh, this week. So um, if that application gets approved, then we can start to open up as part of phase two. Um, I've almost got a phase two. Okay. Working on that phase two schedule uh, for the classes here at Boom um as of right now so it's a little bit uh more of a challenge than i was expecting it to be necessarily so uh the way the phase two is going to work is we're not just stated groups of five or less so that works out for a lot of bell levels but for some bell levels there's more than there's more than four students so it's four students plus me that's five um parents probably won't be allowed to be here to watch the classes unfortunately uh, you guys can hang out outside the window um but uh so we will be able to do stuff here uh right now i'm going to ask that if you're going to be here for the classes uh when we open this part of phase two please wear a mask uh we'll kind of have to adapt some stuff here and there but at least we can still be doing stuff here so um those classes will be held in the afternoon like i said i haven't quite figured out a schedule as to how that's going to work out uh, i need to make sure that i have time to do cleaning in between classes as well so that's part of the guidelines for reopening so um, we want to make sure we do it safely and when we do it safe, we want to make sure, safely and right, excuse me, we want to make sure everybody gets at least two classes in a week. That's kind of what we're going for. So right now the idea is to have two scheduled classes every week for each bell level, kind of like we do with the Zoom classes now. All right. They're not going to quite be by belt rank. They'll just be groups of four. So, um, yeah, that about covers it as far as that goes, guys. Stay, uh, stay tuned for more information as things become, or as more information develops, I guess. So, uh, make sure when you're here, guys, go ahead and check in, in the comment section down below, and let's go ahead and get started. So everybody face the camera, feet together. Go ahead and bow. Bend your knees, slide your horse. Right as I think is on top. Feet together, stand up straight, and bow. All right. So let's start off today, guys. Go ahead and put some gloves on. All right. If you've got a training partner, they can go and hold some targets for you. Skylar, how are you doing, man? Uh, they can go and hold some targets for you. Uh, if you guys are on a bay, you can work on the bay. You can work in the air by yourself. So remember the key things, Megan, Lucia, how's it going, guys? All right, move around, move. Move around as much as you can in the space that you have. If you've got a bag, move around it. If you're hitting in the air, every time you, every time I call it a combo, turn to face a new direction for the next combo. All right, Carson, how you doing, sir? Um, if, you got, if you're with a partner, if they're, training, if they're training with you, if they're holding some targets for you, all right, um, make sure you switch off with them if they are also needing to go around. All right, um, training partners, when you're holding the targets for them, make sure you move around for them, too. All right, so remember guys, start the combos off when they're numbered. One is the left, and then two is left, right. Three is left, right, and then a left hook, and four is left, right, left hook, and then a right uppercut punch. All right, so if that's like, whoa, that's a lot. All right, you can just go left, right, left, right. Pad holders, make sure you talk to your partners all right, so you don't throw, uh, you don't pad for a punch, they throw a different punch. All right, remember, uh, at the end of each of your combos, add in the kick, try to kick it off your other leg. So if you end with the right hand, kick with your left. If you end with the left hand, kick with the right. It can be any kind of kick you want, but again, if you've got a partner that's holding pads for you, make sure you settle on a particular type of kick. All right, don't throw random kicks out there. They're gonna pad for the wrong one, and they're gonna want a whole pad for you anymore. So uh, let's do it, guys. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do a couple one minute rounds. All right, shields up, just kind of warming up. Get ready in three, Two, one, and go. One, boom, and then kick him with that right. Two, right, and then kick with that left. There you go. Three, left, right, left, boom, and then kick with that right. And then four. One, two, three, four. Oh, and then back kick? Sure, why not? Probably can't do that if you're holding the pad, but you know. All right, here we go. Right straight, left hook. Right straight, left hook. Boom, there you go. Knees count as kicks, by the way. Right straight, left hook, right straight. Right straight, left hook, right straight. Boom, there's with that left. All right, right uppercut, left hook, right straight. Uppercut. Hook straight. Boom. Give that left one more time. Two right straights, two left hooks. Right, right, left, left. Good job. When you're punching, where's your other hand? Three and a right straight. One, two, three, right straight. Boom. Three and a right straight, left hook. One, two, three, right straight, left hook. Kick it with that right. There you go. Four. One, two, three, four. Boom. Four and a right straight, left hook. One, two, three, four, right straight, left hook, boom, kick with that right. Hands up now, really quick. 
Holding for your partner, four button punch on your back hand. 10 times as hard as you can. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then off that front hand 10 times. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. Hit as hard as you can. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. There you go. Switch. Other person's gonna hold pads. If you're by yourself or you're on a bag, you're training in the air, whatever, this is gonna be around two for you coming up. All right. Oh, Carson, how you doing? I finally say hi to Carson before. How you doing, Carson? Virginia, how you doing, man? All right, yeah, happy Monday, right? I'm glad the weather held up yesterday. That was nice. We got to go out. We took a kayak out on Birch Bay last yesterday. It's pretty fun. So from right here, guys, round number two or other person's round. In three, two, one, and go. It's one, boom. And then two, left, right, kick with that left. Three, left, right, left hook, kick with that right. There you go, four, left, right, left hook, right straight, boom, kick with that left. There you go, right straight, left hook, pow, pow, boom, kick with that right. There you go, right straight, left hook, right straight, right, left, right, boom. There you go, three and a left hook, one, two, three, give me another left hook, boom, bam. Here we go, two right straights, hard as you can in a row. One, two, bam, kick him with that left. There you go, two left hooks, two right straights. One, two, one, two, boom, kick him with that almost. Take that move. All right, three to left hook, right straight. One, two, three, left hook, right straight, boom, kick him with that left. There you go, four, one, two, three, four, boom, right straight, left hook, right straight, right, left, right, boom, there you go, four and right straight, left hook, one, Two, three, four. Right straight, left hook. Boom, and here you go. Dry stand, face your partner or your bag. Four bone punch every back hand ten times as hard as you can. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Off your front hand now. Same thing. Hit him ten times hard as you can. Rotate your body a little strike, even just a little bit, guys. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good job. Hold it right there, guys. All right, take gloves off real quick, everybody. Get a warm up here, guys. So, I want to go over a couple things today, guys. Whew. Want to work a little bit. Hopefully, you guys got something there. Something you guys can hit a little bit here, but I want to work on some chops. All right? So chops, you can break them down. I like to break them down pretty simple. Like you can really, I mean, you can only chop palm down or palm up. Those aren't the official terms. I'll be like, hey, that's it. It's called palm up chop. Chop palm up or palm down. I mean, we can talk about reverse chops and stuff like that too, and things can get a little like what if you're chopping your palm sideways like that. But that's it. Palm up. Palm down, that's really how it goes. Now, within those categories, you can also take off your front hand or your back hand. So I wanna work both of those a little bit, talk about some different ideas, we can get some power off those chops so we're not just doing like arm karate, like chopping like this, all right? So what I wanna do here is I wanna work on chopping off the front and the back hand and have to rotate, get some rotation in that, get some, get some power on those chops, all right? So we can think of examples as we go through from different techniques and stuff like that, but let's start, Let's start real basic. I mean, let's start with the front hand and we'll chop palm down. Let's say start basic because if you remember like one of your first techniques with the late sword, if a guy tries to grab you, what do you do? Block him, kick him, and hopefully you all said chop him. Chop him. That was the idea. All right? So that was a palm down chop off your front hand. Now the angle of that chop is kind of coming down a little bit. All right, and the idea is you're kind of landing down on that chop as you do it. All right, but there's more to the chop than just you going like, meh, coming down on it like this. So we do that chop right and a little more on the back, you know, more on the vertical surface, and I'm gonna chop, palm down. So when I do this, call not much from rotation, we'll just start with the hand. I'm gonna start with my hand, palm up, like, and I'm gonna turn it, palm down. As I'm chopping, I palm up to palm down, all right? I wanna make sure that I'm not chopping out this way, chopping right out into the target. All right, so that's the idea, palm up, palm down, just up your front hand. I'm not really putting any body into it yet, just getting that hand, just getting the hand rotation. Feel the difference between chopping like this and chopping like this, all right? You really drive that chop into there. A lot more get that extra rotation out of there. Oh, nice. So what I'm going to do here is as I drop into this chop, 
I can rotate a couple different ways to do this. All right. We're going to start with the idea of the modified neutral bone. All right. So as I rotate, this is like you do this in universal three, lock in, chop out. All right. So the idea of this one is I rotate this back part of my body forward a little bit, rotate his body into the strike. Still chopping straight out. Don't pull the chop across this way. All right. Boom. Straight out that way. I'm just rotating my body. If you can see it into that chop. All right. That's the idea. So just try it from right here. You can go from the block in if you want to from universal three and then just boom, drop in that chop. Rotate that body, that modified neutral bone. Feel that body weight dropping into that thing. Still going palm up, palm down. All right. We're going to give it a few shots here. Make sure you got something to chop. All right. If you've got a partner that can hold a pad for you. All right. They can hold it just like right on the chest like this. All right. If it's just a pillow or a couch cushion or something like that, just have it just hold it right up against themselves. All right, don't try to hold it out here like this. You'll like knock it out of their hand a bunch of times. So, oh, uh, here we go. Give it a shot. We're gonna give it a few off the front hand. Keep it, make it your good hand for right now, and just chop, rotate that body into that modified neutral bone. Don't overdo it. You might find as you're doing this, if you rotate too far, you kind of pull the hand away from the target a little bit. I want to do that. I want to rotate the whole thing into that strike. Boom. There you go. Give it a few shots here. Give it a few good shots here. Drop them, bend in the knees a little bit, drop it and rotating into that strike. Nice. Two more. One and two. Nice. Switch. Other foot. Same thing. All right. So palm up, palm down. All right. Here we go. Give it a few shots and rotate into it just like that. All right. So I'm not forward bone. If you see my back foot, I'm not here. All right. Just that modified neutral bone. I just want to drop all this, rotate into that strike. Hand goes palm up, palm down. Nice. Nice. Keep going, guys. That's the idea. This one's not going to feel as smooth at first. Probably not your best hand, because I told you to start with your other hand as your best hand. Okay. Anyway, here we go. Boom. There you go. Come more reps in there, guys. Be nice and solid. Just drop and rotate into that thing. Boom. There you go. One more time. One more time from now. Good. Last one. Ready to go. Good. Last one. Ready to go. Good. Now keep your eyes in the bag. Stop trying to look at the camera every time between all your strikes, Mr. Munch. Yes, sir. All right. Keep your eyes on the target. Boom. Rotate into that strike. Go. Go. And go. Nice. All right. Good job, guys. Look at your target the whole time, but pulling your head to look at the camera every time. Yes, sir. All right. So taking them palm down off the bat, off the front hand. Oh, I apologize. I want you guys to switch. If you've got a partner that's holding pad for you, go ahead and switch. Make sure the other person gets that turn. All right. So again, when you're chopping that pad, start with your front hand. All right. Drop and rotate into it. Boom. All right. Just a little rotation. Like I said, I'm not forward bowing all the way like this. All right. Just that little drop in that front hand. That's all I need. Boom. All right. That's the idea. So give it a try. Make sure the other person gets a turn off both hands. All right. Make sure you can And try to avoid the push. I'll always say that. Try to avoid the. Yeah. All right. So get that thing. You can drive into a little bit, but don't. Take that. All right. Hit into it, but don't push it. Boom. And you might find as you're going through this, like, I'll feel one every now and like, that was, that was more push than I would have liked. All right? So I practice just want to get that striking energy into it. Make sure you're hitting it and not just pushing. All right? So switch now. We're going to go palm down chop off the backhand this time. All right? So if you want to think back, the first time I can think about it, the time ahead, this comes up in the technique is in snapping twig. When you high five under the elbow, you hook their arm, grab it, you pull them into that chop with the backhand. All right? Now, you do get kind of the double, the double rotations here on this one, or the double pull on this one. I guess you pull this guy into the chop. So there's a lot going on here. But if we want to just kind of isolate this, just the forward bow and chop part. All right, that's the idea. Now this has kind of got a weird rotation. You, your hand kind of rotates opposite of the way your foot rotates, the way your body rotates. So in this case, you're going to use more of the opposing forces. If it helps to take this front hand here, all right, and bring it back. Think about bringing this hand back. As you floor bow and chop, all right, you can do that too. Pull it back, all right, and use this opposing force. Think about that, driving that back shoulder forward, all right. So, but that's the once you floor bow, chop out, palm down into the bag. Do it again, floor bow, bow, chop out, palm down. There you go. Do it again, go. Bam. And again, go. Nice. Strike it into it, nice and strong. Ready, go. All right, do it again, floor bow and chop, bow. Right there, do it one more time. Ready, go. Oh, last one. Ready, go. Nice. Now, when we're chopping here, we start rotating that forward bow. We can start hitting this bag pretty hard. All right. So, want to make sure that when I'm doing the chop, that I'm chopping with the chop part of my hand 
and not the wrong part of my hand. So here we go. When it comes to the chop, a couple things. I want to try to make my hand as solid and compact as I can when I chop. So it's like when I make a fist, I don't want to kind of just make some loosey goosey fist here. I roll my fingers in nice and tight, make my fist nice and compact because I don't want to hit something and be like, I was punch, ow, my hand. I don't want to get, ow, my hand. All right. So I want to make sure I keep the side of my hand nice and strong. What I do is I think like if you're flexing your muscles like this, kind of flex my fingers a little bit. So you can see they're kind of curled in. All right. Not like closed up like a fist, but they're just, I just kind of flex them like that. All right. That tightens up that muscle in the side of my hand right there. And it makes this a little more solid, protects those bones in my hand just a little bit better. All right. Generally, I like to chop to softer targets. So it's not as huge of a deal. All right. Generally, I'm a person talking about chopping. So it's not like I'm hitting through solid bricks with this. Okay. All right. But that's the idea. Make this nice and solid. Keep it nice and tight, nice and compact. All right. Protect your hand more. It'll hit the guy harder. All right. So as far as the chop goes, anything is valid from like the bottom of the pinky finger to me, like on down to about the here. All right. A lot of times when I'm chopping on a guy, I'll actually chop with more of my forearm here because that forearm bone is solid. All right. Then these, these my hands free for grabbing. If you know that the extension that we made to delayed sword where you come over the top and grab him from the chop. All right. You know what I'm talking about. I can hit him and then still grab him with that hand. So for this angle here, I would say when you're more bone chop with the backhand, I'm definitely going to hit more with this. All right. What I'm going to try to do with this chop is I'm going to try to fit it in, in this case, the angle that we're hitting at, right in here, right underneath the jawline. So my hand's not going to be flat like this. It's not going to be vertical like this. I kind of want to match it to the angle of my jaw so it fits right underneath there, nice and smooth. All right. So that's the idea. When I'm hitting here, that's what I'm hitting. I'm hitting with that side of the hand, all right, below the pinky finger, all right, with the hand, elbow down. I don't have that elbow up. Elbow down. All right, that wrist pulled back a little bit to make that good fitting angle. All right, so from right here, try it. Four bow, chop it off that back hand. Do it. Go. Nice. You're going to need me 10 good solid ones. Four bow and chop. Solid. Use the rotation. Driving this back elbow back as you come in. Four bow and chop. Nice. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure to rotate all the way into your four bow. Keep that heel down. We talked about that too. Go. Seven, I think. I lost one. Eight. Nine. And 10. All right, switch, other side, same thing. So if you want to go back to stamping twig and you want to do like the pulling in here into that forward bow, all you're doing without a guy's arm there is just using the opposing forces. All right, this elbow's coming back as this hand's chopping out into him. All right, so give it a shot. Keep your eyes in the bag the whole time. Hey. All right, forward bow and chop. Oh, there you go, like that, do it again, go. Bam, hands right up here, pulling it right back. Bam, there you go, like that, do it again, go. Nice, and six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Good. Switch partners, guys, if you haven't done so already. Other person's turn. All right, forward bone, chopping off that back hand. So it's the same idea. Start with your best hand. Think about pulling your other arm back. Oh, Mr. Forward bone, chop. Do it. Bam, just like that. Nice. Nice and solid out of there. You should be able, like, somebody holding pads for you. Keep chopping, guys. But somebody holding pads for you on this one should have to like brace themselves. If you're forward bowing and chopping strong and they're just standing like this, you should knock them back every time. They should have to match your stance so they don't skate back across the floor. Switch, make sure you hit that other side here too, forward bow. Now, when it's my bad side, so one thing that I've kind of picked up over the years is I would like to describe things in terms of my good side. So this is my right side, I'm hitting with my other hand, with my left hand. All right, when I hit my right hand, I think about what my right hand is doing. That's my good hand, that's the one I want to focus on. Oh, so when I'm doing this here and I'm chopping with not my best hand, I still think about pulling this, what my right hand's doing. So in this case, my right hand's providing the opposing force, coming back like that. So if this is not, if your left hand is not your strong hand, think about really feeding it with your right, with your good hand. Your good hand feeds good. Yeah. All right, so really pull this back as you then let that drive you into that forward bow. Go. Give it a shot. Just think about that right hand, that good hand coming back. Boom. Boom. Chop him. Chop him. There you go. Just like that. Drive it into him. Nice. I think. I don't know. Good job. Keep your eyes on the target. Stop looking at the screen. Boom. There you go. Good job, guys. All right. So palm down. Front hand, back hand. Nice. Now, palm up. Oh. All right. Uh, I guess the first time we come up against the 
the first come up against that I just is in sort of destruction. It's the other one from yellow belt where you go block them, kick them, and chop them like this. This is coming in palm up. All right. So it comes up in a few of the techniques. It's generally like uh, they're in five swords. Boom. Right before. Oh, you guys don't want to have never mind. But so it comes up a bit here at the end of five swords, too. Uh, so it can be used generally again. This is when it's done to the neckle region here. All right. And the idea in the palm up chop, same basic weapon, same basic part of my hand. I'm just tucking it in there. Instead of coming across this way, it's coming from the same side of my body in toward the center. All right, I suppose coming from the other side of the body in toward the center. All right, so that's the idea here. When I'm chopping palm up off this front hand, I want to make sure, again, that I'm not chopping. Generally, I don't want to chop across like this. The guys in front of me, I'm driving out into them. Now, again, the angle of the target could dictate the angle that I'm going to strike him at here. But for right now, if the guy's in front of me, I'm just going to slide this thing, almost like a, like a, like a finger thrust, all right, but just with the side of my hand. All right, I'm just going to take that chop motion in my hand and just, oh, stick. I'm not looking to stick it like in the side of his neck, all right? If you guys look like it, this on next to the throat here on the side of the, where your voice box is, your neck is kind of soft and squishy right there, all right? That's where people take your pulse. That's kind of where I'm looking to chop, all right? So when I'm looking to do this chop, I basically chop him right on that, that big old like blood vessel that carries blood to his brain, and it makes him go nappy, all right? So that's the idea here. I'm doing this chop four bow and again. I'm matching the angle of my jawline here. All right, I said four bow, no four bow, sorry guys. All right, for right now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda go from a modified neutral one and just drive the hip forward a little bit. All right, there's not much rotation in the body. I'm not like, Ugh. Sometimes, but not usually, not usually. I wanna try to find the maximum power with the minimum amount of, I almost said effort, but the minimum amount of motion. So I wanna economize my motion as much as possible. All right, I get the best result from the least motion. All right, so bang, I say just take that front hand, I'm gonna drive it forward. Try to avoid the leaning forward on it, don't do that. I just drive that front hand forward. Oh, and again, I got some opposing force. My, my back hand here is kind of pulling back to drive this front hand out into it a little bit. Oh, that's the idea. There you go. Just like that. So give it a few chops. The same idea. You've got a partner holding the pad, hold it right on the chest. All right, and then just drive the side of that hand right into that chop. All right. Try to make sure you keep your wrist and your fingers nice and strong. You'll notice you start hitting a few, even on a pad. But you start getting a few solid in there and something's not strong, like your wrist isn't strong, your fingers are, you're like, ooh, that's kind of starting to stain. So make sure you keep this hand nice and strong. Boom! And drive that chop at the end of it. All right, try it off the other side too. Same thing here. Now, again, this is not my best hand, so I'm going to focus a little more on this one coming back. Drive that chop. Boom! Boom! That's the idea. Just right into it. Pow! All right, try to avoid coming around the side that way. Excuse me. For this next one. All right, so that's the idea to drive that front hand in. Just that little rotation off the hips. I'm not, again, back there, just boom, driving right to the target every time. All right, switch, other person's turn. Same thing, just driving those chops right out into them. All right, and like, so think about like this instead of this going into your chest, it's going right up in here. All right, right in the side of the neck right there. And that's kind of the idea. All right, so we can talk about. Oh, make sure the front, uh, the second person should be taking their turn right now, by the way. It's driving that front hand chop, palm up into that target. All right, make sure you work both sides here a little bit. We take a lot of different things off this chop. We can go chop and we can still do the grab. Uh, we haven't even talked about that yet, but if you're chopping the neck right here, you can just clop to their face. All right? It's not crazy with you. That's the idea. Just right into those chops, palm up. Boom! Oh, get that body rotated into it. The purple belts, like Carson, guys like that. All right, we talked about that modified neutral bow, just rotating your body, getting power up that rotation, but not necessarily having to go all the way to a forward bow every time. All right, there is a time and a place to do that, but trying to go all the way there every time. Just get that little rotation off the hip, trying to lean onto that front leg. Avoid that, avoid the lean. All right, it's just the rotation. Boom, the head's not leaning forward. The body's just rotating forward. You see my head kind of stays in place right there? I'm probably just looking at the target instead of the screen, but you guys see what I'm saying. The head's not leaning forward, staying right there. The body's rotating in. Boom, 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 oh, sorry, somebody's having fun, that's me. All right, good job guys, hope both people got a chance to go on that one. Palm up off the front leg, so I guess then we got palm down, or palm up off the back leg. This is kind of an unusual one, it doesn't come up a whole lot, it's a pretty short range, relatively speaking, all right? This palm up chop, so I'm four bone and chopping off that back hand. This one to me is a lot, it's a lot like that finger thrust we were doing before, all right, it's a lot like a punch, but with a chopping motion here. Uh, this one you come up against a flashing wing. Those of you guys who got that far, 
I uh, flashing when was it? I mean, blue going to green to begin in green. So, but the idea on that one was he came in through, he punched at you, you blocked him, hit him with a couple of elbows, chopped him in the back of the neck, and he came back and chopped him in the front of the neck. All right, and there was your four bow and hitting him with chop, palm up off your backhand. All right, so this one I really kind of think about rotating into like a punch. All right, just four bow and driving that thing straight out into him. All right, so again, it's just four bow and chopping, just like this. All right, so that's the idea. To me, this one is, is more like a punch than any other one we've done so far. All right, the rotation to the same, the four bow is coming the same direction, same rotation as the chop on this one, so you can really combine those two together. All right, so four bow, chop and palm up off your backhand. That's the idea. So, other hand, pull him back to here if you stay at garden. If you want to, like, uh, in the technique, what it was doing was kind of hitting him with his arm first. All right, let's not be crazy with it. All right, so just four bow and chop off that backhand. Ready, go. Give it a few reps. Nice. Four bow, shoot that thing in there. Don't push him back. Don't hit him. Don't hit him. And then push into him. Strike. Boom. Strike. Hit him. Bam. Go. Nice. Four bow and drive in that. Nice. Keep going. And one more time. Nice. Switch. Other side. Same thing. So get that idea that forward bow. And again, this is your, if this is your, not your best hand, this is your off hand. I think about pulling that other hand back. Pull, pull your good hand back. All right. Free that chop. That way. All right. Here we go. Ready? Go. Four bow. Chop off that back. Ready? Go. Do it again. Ready? Go. Nice. One more time. Try to get that angle now on that hand. So my hand's not this way. It's palm up. Boom. All right, kind of tilt it at that angle right there. Imagine that jawline. Boom. Good. Do it again. Nice. There you go. Keep driving up. There you go. Bam. And bam. Nice. There you go, guys. And again, make sure to keep that hand nice and solid, nice and strong when you're doing those hits. All right. Uh, switch at the person's turn. Four bow and chop and palm off that off that back hand. All right. And just, I mean, let them have it. When you're doing this one, yeah, this is just, just let it rip. Just boom. No need to hold back. It's almost it's almost a heel palm. All right, just with a slightly smaller striking surface, so it hurts more. All right, bam, four bow and strike. Boom. And lay that thing in there. Go. Get that chop in there. Solid. Nice. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Keep going. Nice. Switch other side. Make sure you get both hands in there. All right. So do the same thing. On not your best hand. All right. If it's just you by yourself, just keep revving it. Just switch hands. All right, you get one hand feeling good. Usually your good hand will start to feel it. You're like, oh, I'm getting it. All right? Think about how that feels in your good hand. Then go over to your other side and try to duplicate that feeling. All right? So I know. I know this is a fact for me. When I'm on my off side, I'm on my left side right now. All right? If I think about just what my right hand's doing, my left hand will do what it's supposed to. But if I start thinking about how to hit with my left, I, <laughs> I get all bound up in here like this. I got to think about my right. My right hand comes back. Boom! Drives that chop. This is what drives this hand right here. Boom! That's the idea. That right hand coming back. Boom! Drives that chop forward. If I start thinking about chopping my back, I get all in. My shoulder's all up there. All right, just pull that right hand back. Boom! That's what it's supposed to do. Go! Oh, that's the idea. Do it again. Go! Nice. So hold it right there, guys. So, chops. Palm up, palm down. Uh, front leg, back leg. Really wanted to work the variety of them, using them, figuring out how to get the rotation into those chops to make them effective. So no matter what range I'm striking with, what angle, that chop is going to have the effect I'm looking for it to have. Generally, we talk about chops going to necks. Uh, I, we didn't get into like reverse hand swords or anything like that to the groin, like when you go bowling and dance death or uh, lock your horns or any of those. But generally, we talk about putting chops into necks, all right, back of the neck, side of the neck, into the throat. Right into the carotid or whatever, all right? But there are some other targets you can hit with the chops too, all right? Some good ones in uh, parting wings, all right? I start teaching you guys this as a heel palm, all right? When you part the wings, step back, hit them with the heel palm. But it's actually a palm up chop. You can make it into a chop. All right? Um, so finding out other targets you can hit with these is a couple of techniques where you chop them in the kidney, too. That works out pretty good, all right? There's a couple you chop in the back of the knee. Uh, shield and mace for you guys that have done that one. Hammer hoop, chop at the back of the knee here, palm down. Uh, what else? Oh, in um, gift and return for the handshake. When they sit the hand between the legs, you come back and you chop them in the back of the knee, palm up, and then you grab the wrist. So, the thing about how to get power in some of these strikes in when you're doing gift and return, for example, 
You can't just go, bam. You, I need to manipulate their leg. I need to bank, make their leg bend with my arm. So I better drop some body weight, some rotation onto that chop into the back. We need to grab their wrist. Otherwise, the leg's not going to move. I'm going to be very, very sad inside. So that's the idea, guys. Working those chops. Yes, typically we're working today on the bags, like about a neck height or so for us. All right. But they do have other applications as well. So play around, have fun with chops. Uh, think about times when they come up in techniques we have not necessarily done into the neck. All right. And uh, really think about how you can get that rotation into those chops to get that power behind it. So I'm going to set the bag out to the side for just have a second. All right. I do want to work on uh, kicks today. I do want to work on some front kicks. All right. So front kicks are the first ones that I teach you guys. And it's easy to learn them at first because you learn them from just this. And you're like, hey, look at that, front kicks. Toes point straight up in the air, the toes are right pointing more like the direction they have to be. You can just pick up your knee and stomp straight out in front of you. And that is awesome and pretty easy to do, all right? It starts to get tricky when we start to go back into guard stances. So I step back with my leg into a guard stance, now my toes aren't pointing in the right direction anymore, all right? So when I go to do a front kick from here, I end up like, I don't gotta turn my body over, so I end up going like something like that and put it down in front of me. That is not a front kick, all right? That is a kick, all right? And I'm not going to say never do that kick. There's a technique that the little dragons learned called the attacking mace, where you do that exact kick. Kind of this weird half front, half roundhouse kick. Then you just kick right up, up the inside of his leg, right into his groin. All right? And that's kind of the idea. But that's not a front kick. So what I'm looking to do here is I want to get my body turned and rotated in for a front kick. So what I'm going to do here is from a bar stance, all right, take your best leg to the back. So if I kick my right leg, my right leg would be in the back. Oh, I don't even know which is right and left anymore. All right, so whichever leg you want to kick with is in the back to start off with. Rotate your body forward. Do a forward bow like when you punch. All right, then take your front heel, drop it in. Now your body's turned this way. Don't tiptoe on this bottom foot. All right, when you do this front kick from right here, keep your body this way. Don't let it turn over as you kick. So as I come in for this kick, I'm just, I'll keep my hands right here. Elbows point straight to the side. I'm going to kick here, land in, and then rotate back to my guard stance. All right, so Breaking it down like super slow and step by step, that's kind of what I'm looking to do. That keeps you from tiptoeing, that keeps you from doing the whole weird bang up thing here, it keeps me from turning my body over too much. So that's the idea. One leg in the front, boom, up your back leg, forward bow, drop the front heel in, front kick, toes point straight up in the air, then rotate back to your stance as you land. Just step back behind you. Do it again. Rotate it. Just keep doing these in the air for just a second. I want to get a couple of mechanical things in before we start hitting bags. Because I don't want you guys kicking the bags this slow. I'm already bored. All right? So, front kick and then put it in front of you. So that's the idea, guys. When I land, front kick here, boom. After I reach over my foot, now right now I'm landing and then rotating back into my stance. Eventually I kind of smooth that out a little bit. And as I land, so after I reach over my foot here, that's when I rotate back into my stance. All right? We can talk about stuff here when we get in a second with uh, some more advanced, advanced landing techniques. All right? But that's the idea. So from right here, off my back leg, rotate forward, keep the body facing squared up like this. Drop that front heel in to keep me from tiptoeing. Boom, the boot, and then put it down in front of you, rotating back into that guard stance. One more time right behind you. So try to smooth these out. So I'm going to rotate, drop the heel, front kick, land it right in front of me. And that's the idea. The, the big part is all this rotation just to get the body here. Get the body squared up this way, then don't tiptoe when you kick by dropping that heel in, and you're good to go. All right? So... Last pro tip here, when you drop that heel in, if you notice, when I do this for the front kick, this is where my foot's going to end up when I'm back in my guard stance here. So if it helps to think of it that way, do that. All right? So here we go. This is what I want to do. I want to do some front kicks on the back. I want you guys to make sure you're kicking something, and then when you kick this something, that your body is pointing straight forward. Now, if you don't have something that's going to move back when you kick it, then you're just going to have to put your foot back where it came from every time. But if you do have a partner that can move back when you kick them, have them move back. I want you to try to land your leg in the front for right now. All right, we'll do that just wide in just a second. But if you're on a bag, just laying back behind you, what we got, all right? So from right here, keep those shields up, <laughs> all right? Rotate that back part of the body forward. Drop that front heel in, front, boom, all right? Now, try to go a little faster. Rotate forward, and then that kick, boom. Do it again, rotate forward, blast into that front kick. Ready, go. Yeah, keep your eyes on the target when you kick. All right, turn, blast it. All right, if you've got a purse, I want to think about driving them back. I want to do like a thrusting front kick. So that means when I put my foot into them, I want to put my foot through them and drive them back. All right, as opposed to a snapping kick, where I just bring my foot right back right away. All right, which has its uses. Maybe I want to keep them here and make them bend over instead of making them go backwards and bend over. All right? But for right now, thrusting kicks. Boom, driving them back. Do it again. Ready, go. Pow. 
Nice, one more time. Ready, go. Nice. Can you tell me about the brown buzz and about getting rotations in there with the hands and stuff like that? You can work that too. Don't cast lightning bolts again. All right, but it's just this little, that little rotation. Oh, you can't even really see it. Okay, unless you're looking for it specifically, but it's not an obvious motion. Again, it's not. Lightning bolts. All right? So that's the idea. Switch your feet. All right? Other foot, same thing. Again, if this isn't your best foot, all right, practice with it too. All right? So same idea. I want to rotate the back foot forward, drop that front heel in. Boom, front heel. Toes point straight up in the air. All right? Again, make sure those toes are pointing straight up in the air just like that when you're doing it, guys. All right? Oh, from right here. Really quick, one more time. One second here, guys. Let me go on. Got a visitor. Apologies, guys. Had a little spider that wanted to drop my right halo, so I took him outside. But anyway, here we go. So, hopefully, I was still practicing your front kick. So, off your back leg, boom, toes point straight up in the air. That's what I'm working on. Get that body turned this way, squared up this way. Don't try to front kick from here. All right? There's your side kicks. There's your roundhouse kicks. Front kicks, body's got to turn this way. All right? So, if you're looking at the other kicks and kicks set, off the front kicks, all right, you go back leg and then front leg. So, again, have your best leg to the front for right now. Turn that body this way. There it is. There's my body turned that way. There's that cast stance again. Don't get taller. Pick your front foot up and kick. Now, when I kick up my front leg, they tend to be more snapping kicks than thrusting kicks. So I'm not going to like so much. All right? I can, but usually when I'm here off my, off my front leg, I'm just going to cat, rotate my body this way. Boom. Front kick just like that. Just drop that butt down. Turn the hips. Again, turn the hips square. Turn the front hip back in this one. That's the idea. So, again, don't tiptoe on this foot. When I drop my butt, I put my weight on this heel. That heel goes into the ground. It gives me a nice, solid base to kick from. All right? So I drop, turn, kick. Drop, turn, kick. Drop, turn, kick. Just like that. All right? Switch. Try the other foot. Drop your butt. Turn. Drop your front hip back. Just square yourself up. Front kick. Then after you re-chamber here, that's when you rotate back into your stance as you plant your foot down. Ooh, I see that in a weird way. All right? So cat, kick, boom, put it down in front of you. Cat, kick, put it right down in front of you. Try to avoid the lean. All right? There's a fine line between driving your hips forward and leaning your head backward. All right? So what will happen a lot of times, you'll see people that are like, they'll be like, hey, like they're leaning back, but they're not. They're really driving their hips forward. All right, if you watch the head position, that's what's important. If the head starts coming back this way, then you're leaning back. So, but if you're driving your hips forward into that kick, forward into that kick, the head doesn't, oh, that's, that's weird. Uh, the head doesn't move back, but the hips drive forward. So you kind of look, if you just take a picture of that moment in time, you do kind of look like you are leaning back. All right, but you really want to try to drive those hips forward, all right, instead of leaning yourself away from that kick. All right, so we did the, the kicks off the front leg. Actually, with a cat. So if you remember the neck kick, is to drag, is to drag up and kick. That's neck kick and kick set, eh? So it's the same idea that we talked about with all the other ones. The idea is to get my hips squared up this way. All right? That's what's going to make it a front kick as opposed to a side or a rounder. So I'll kick or something else. Crescent kick, axe kick. Uh, am I missing any? I'm sure I am. All right? But here's the idea. When I shuffle up, I'm instead of, when I cat it back before, I drop my front hip back. Now I'm going to take my back hip as I shuffle up and bring it up to my front hip. Boom. So when I catted before, I take my back hip. Oh, my gosh. When I catted before, I took my front hip back squared up with my back hip. Now I'm taking my back hip and dragging it up to be square with my front hip. I use the word square a lot in that sentence. All right? So that's the idea. When you shuffle up, shuffle up and turn your body this way. Boom. All right? Some quick tips on turning your body up square. Don't, check, don't hang out here. All right, it's not a hangout position. All right, you're pretty vulnerable. Keep your center line protected. So when I drag up here, if you see where my guard is, all right, when I drag up, all right, keep this area covered. Keep that center line covered. All right, front kick, drop it back down to a guard stance. All right, so give it a shot here. You start back from your bag. You're going to shuffle up, square up the hips. Front 
front kick. Shuffle up, split the hips in front. This could be either a thrusting kick or a snapping kick. This one can really be done either way. It just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. All right? So, a um, couple things when you're shuffling up, trying to get taller. I don't want to like, I'm not doing that. Oh, that's kind of fun. All right, so all I'm going to do is going to shuffle up, turn the hips forward, front kick. I'm going to try to smooth it out. Shuffle up, kick. Oh, shuffle up. If you've got a bag, you're probably going to have to come back from the kick every time. If you've got somebody that can move for you when you kick them, all right, have them move back every time you kick so you can still land forward. I want to shuffle up, kick, land forward. That's what I'd like to do. All right, so here we go. Shuffle up, kick. Oh, I can kind of land forward a little bit. All right, so here we go. Shuffle up, turn the hips. Keep those hips square. Bring that back hip, turn it square. Kick, and again. Oh, all right. Switch. Other foot. So here you go. You're going to shuffle up. Front kick to the other foot now, whichever one was at your best. So I was taking my right leg before, that was my good leg. So what I'm doing, as I want to think about bringing my right hip up to my left, get that left kick. Keeping that center line covered, go. Boom. Get that back hip squared up. Pop. Do it again. Boom. One more time. Ready? And go. Pow. And again, ready to go. Boom. Nice. Good job, guys. All right, switch. Make sure the person gets a chance to go. If you've got a partner that you're switching off with, all right, make sure they have something that they can hold. I probably should have mentioned this before. Something that they can hold that you can kick. All right, like a couch cushion, something a little more heavy duty than a pillow, probably, for these front kicks, especially for some of the older kids. All right, and this guy's got a bag, but uh, yeah, maybe in the see If you guys are kicking pillows, you're probably hurting the person holding those pillows. All right, so make sure the other person gets a chance to do the shuffle up kicks off both legs here. Turn those hips. So if you're the person holding the pad for them, all right, you can kind of help them out a little bit. Like if you see they kick and they're like this and their foot's all angled off, let them know, hey, turn your body more, get the hips turned. Now right, get your body turned, get your body turned this way. Front kick, boom. Shuffle up, turn the body. Nice day to get those hips squared up. All right, and make sure you get both feet. Same idea. All right, if you're just by yourself, just doing another round of it. All right. Boom, as you get better, trying to make a little signal. So shuffle up, front kick, shuffle up, boom. Just like that. So, all right, last thing for today. Let's take front kicks to their totally logical conclusion. Skip kicks and jump front kicks, all right? So there are two different ways to do a skip kick. Uh, some people call it a chicken kick. The chicken kick, you kind of get it. I, I don't like the name, but it really helps you get the idea down there. You pick up whichever leg I'm going to kick with. The other leg's coming up in the air. So I'm going to kick my right, pick my left foot up. What I think I'm going to do is drive my left foot down as I pick up my right knee and kick. So you can proceed that with a left front kick into a right front kick. All right, but this either way, it's the same idea. I want to drive, pick up one knee, drive that foot down as this one comes up and skip into that kick. All right, avoid the leg swing. I know that's what everybody starts out doing. You're just picking your leg up. Make sure it's a front kick. Knee comes up and then you kick out. All right, so a couple of different ways you guys can break this down. I'm going to do some skip kicks on the back. So I'm not going to do the left kick and then the right kick. I'm just going to go left knee and then right kick. All right, so you can do both if you want to. That's totally, oh, totally fine. Usually with a bag, I find like I have to take my left kick back a little bit. All right, otherwise I end up pushing myself back off the bag too much with it. So, um. But yeah, it's up to you. You can do both kicks if you want to, or you can just do one. Oh, but I want you to make sure you're not doing the leg swing. All right? Pick up your knee and drive it out into the bag, or drive your foot out into the bag. Too. So knee comes up, this foot goes down, and the foot kicks right into it. All right? So if you're having difficulty doing this and you're still doing that leg swing, some things you can do to kind of break this down. Pick up that knee. Oh, so let me get side view here. Pick up that knee and then just skip knee. So here, as this foot drives down, just the knee comes up. Foot drives down, knee comes up. Then once the knee comes up, fire that kickoff. And it's okay if you're not skipping yet, but eventually you get that skip back in there and you're good to go. So knee comes up, boom, then there's the kick again. But make sure you pick your knee up first and not just doing the kick. Oops. Not just doing the knee and then the jump leg spin. All right? So, um, yeah, skip kicks on the back. So give them a try here with the guys. Again, you can go one foot and then skip and kick with the other, or you can just go knee and then skip and kick. All right, either way is fine, but you want your 
Your best leg kicking last on this one, so give it a shot. Knee comes up, it's skip kick. All right, give it a kick and go. Knee comes up, skip kick. One more time, go. Bam. All right, switch, turn out the other side. So now bring up your good knee, and as that good foot drives down, the other foot comes up for the kick. I shouldn't say good foot, other foot. My left leg will feel so bad about itself. So here we go. This foot drives down, that left foot comes up. Oh, into that skip kick. That's the idea. Drive the foot down. Oh, into that skip kick. Do it again. Pow! There you go. Oh! Feel cocky. You want to add that first kick back in? Woohoo! Nice. All right, guys. We're going to hold it right there for today. Good job, everybody. So um, I didn't get to jump front kicks, unfortunately, today. All right. But we're back here on Wednesday, guys. I'll do some more of the grappling drills. I want to work on. Um, let me take down too a little bit, and hopefully, I will have a schedule for the phase two and a little bit more information for you about when we might be open for phase two. So, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know in the comment section down below. Send me a message on Facebook or anything like that. If you tested for your belt on Saturday, uh, your belt certificate will not be ready this afternoon. I apologize, I ran out of laminating sheets. So, um, I'll have to get some more of those from the store and then I'll have it ready for. Uh, Tuesday morning. So uh, thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Uh, thanks so much and stay tuned. Uh, let's close this out. Feet together. Everybody go ahead and bow. Bend your knees, slide your horse. Pick it up. Stand up straight and bow. All right. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. And we will see you guys next time. Now it's just awkward. <laughs>